Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. I got another Master Duel video for you. So it's been a while since we did one of these uh, Let's Talk About style of videos, but uh, in the past I've liked to do these sort of primer videos uh, when a new archetype or especially a new engine is about to come out that will pretty hugely shake up uh, the meta uh, due to its prevalence and also how uh, it helps boost up, particularly as an engine, uh, other decks within the meta. So um, you've probably heard a lot of people talking about this card right here, Diabellstar the Black Witch. Um, and now that it's no longer just a leak, but been confirmed that we are getting this card uh, in Master Duel, as well as some of the Sinful Spoils and Snake Eyes cards, uh, I thought it was definitely pertinent that we take some time to talk about them. Uh, not only to take a look at the cards themselves and see their effects and what they're all about, um, but we'll also look at how these cards are most likely to impact the metagame moving forward. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and just start off with the leading lady herself, Diabellstar the Black Witch. Uh, she is going to be a level 7 dark spellcaster monster with 2500 attack and 2000 defense. Her text reads as follows. You can special summon this card from your hand by sending one card from your hand or field to the graveyard. You can only special summon Diabellstar the Black Witch once per turn this way. You can only use each effect of the, or you can only use each of the following effects of Diabellstar the Black Witch once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can set one Sinful Spoils spell or trap card directly from your deck. During your opponent's turn, if this card is sent from the owner's hand or field to the graveyard, you can send one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon this card. So I think even if you don't know what any of the Sinful Spoils cards do at all, it's not difficult to see why this is a good card, right? Um, this is a monster that is pretty easy to summon. Uh, it's got multiple summoning conditions. You can either just special summon her, you know, as a just effect from your hand. Um, also, this effect, if I'm reading the wording correctly, does not start a chain. So. If you send a card from your hand or field to the graveyard and special summon Dia Bellstar, um, it's like, what are some examples? Menadia Meek, uh, it's like extra deck summons in general. Uh, it's like Cashier Fenrir, Cashier Monster summoning from hand. None of those summons start a chain link, which means your opponent's going to have to preemptively use Maxi, for example, um, if they want to get the draw off of Dia Bellstar summoning herself off the first effect. There's also, of course, the second effect. This one does, however, start chain link. This one you can chain max C to and get the draw off. The way to know that is to look, by the way, for uh, conditions or costs. If a card has a cost or a condition, uh, such as right here during your opponent's turn, if this card is sent from the owner's hand or field to the graveyard colon, that's a condition. That means it's an effect that uses a chain link, right? Same of, again, if it had a cost. Uh, the first line, however, just says, You can special summon this card from your hand by sending one card from your hand or field to the graveyard, period. There's no colon, there's no semicolon, meaning there's no cost or condition, meaning this effect doesn't start a chain link. So, that's how to know when you can, for example, again, chain Maxi to Diabell Star to get the draw off the summon. That's going to be something that's important to know, so definitely make sure to note that. Um... And, of course, not only is this card very easily summonable, by the way, sending cards from Handerfield to the Graveyard is not only a very easy cost to fulfill, but there are a lot of decks that want their cards to go from the Hand or Field to the Graveyard. So, um, in a lot of situations, that can even be an upside, not necessarily a drawback, right? But, yeah, also on top of that, when this card is normal as Special Summoned, and again, it has multiple ways to Special Summon itself, being able to set a Sinful Spoil Spell or Trap card, that is super good. Like, here's the thing, uh, for a card to gain that kind of advantage, like, Sinful Spoil Spell and Trap cards don't even have to be that great for this to be worth it. Uh, spoiler alert, by the way, they are really good, making them extra worth it. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, when a card is this easy to summon and can gain advantage that easily, Sinful Spoil cards could have very minor effects and there's a lot of situations where they probably would still be worth searching. But again, they're actually going to have very major meta-warping, uh, game-changing effects attached to them, making this card 
even more good. So, uh, not difficult to see. Also, Diabell Sword just has really good stats. Dark is a very relevant attribute. Uh, level 7 is good for synchroing and exceeding, right? Uh, that's an Aurodon, that's a Tomahawk level, so uh, potential shenanigans you can do with that. Um, and yeah, uh, also uh, the ability to not only, like the ability to set a Sinful Spore or Trap card whenever this card is special summoned, it means you not only get to set one proactively when you use the proactive effect to summon this from hand, but also if your opponent ends up answering this, right? and you reactively use the effect of special and summon her back, you still get to set another Sinful Spoil Spoiler Trap card. That's insane. That's super duper good. So, again, not difficult at all to see why this card is going to be good moving forward. Let's take a look at some of the cards she can set up. Oh, also, I want to talk about this too real quick, right? We're going to talk about Sinful Spoils and Snake Eyes cards, but not every single one of them. I am going to focus on... The cards that were in the first wave of support as well as a couple of others that weren't in the first wave but i feel like you have a decent shot of showing up as well so um yeah it's not going to be every single uh sinful spoils and sick eye card just the ones that are most likely to show up here within master duel so oops sorry i alt tabbed when i meant to control tab here we go all right, next card that we're going to talk about is wanted seeker of sinful spoils this is a quick play spell card that says add one Diabell Star monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. During your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your sinful spoils spell or trap cards that is banished or in your graveyard, except wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils. Place it on bottom of the deck and then draw one card. You can only use each effect of wanted Seeker of Sinful Spoils per turn. So, again, not difficult to see why this card is good, uh, especially with the Diabell Star. It's a searcher for Diabell Star. Diabell Star can also search this. Uh, you can also um, recycle your Sinful Spoils cards very easily, and you even get a draw out of it. So, like, that's super good. Like, I think if, if this card of the graveyard effect to simply recycle other cards and not have the draw, like, that effect would already be really good. But the fact that it gives you a draw on top of that means that actually it means that in the long run you're even recouping that advantage loss uh the sending a card for diabell star you get to recoup that in the long term by drawing a card here now the thing to note of course about this is that it's a quick play spell card so if for example you open diabell star and use her effects to set seeker well you can't flip it up on the same turn because again it's a quick play spell card but Still, of course, very, very good for making the Diabell Star a lot more searchable and making the engine as a whole uh, a lot more searchable. So, very, very good. Very good. Search card that is also searchable by the search target is almost always a banger. All right, we got Sinful Spoils of Doom. Rakila? Rakila? Rakila. I'm going to say Rakila. Might be incorrect, but it's also a very fantasy-looking word. So, anyway... This is also going to be a quick play spell card. It says, target one level 7 or higher spellcaster monster you control. Apply the following effects. While face up, that monster is unaffected by other monsters' effects this turn, and is sent to the graveyard during the standby phase of the next turn. All monsters your opponent currently controls lose attack equal to the targeted monster's attack. Then, if their attack becomes zero by this card effect, destroy them. You can only activate one Sinful Spoils of Doom, Rakila, per turn. So, uh, another quick play spell card means that you also cannot activate this during your turn, uh, or just during the same turn you set it with the Abel Star, uh, even if that does end up being your opponent's turn, right? Um, again, obvious synergy with the Diabell Star herself, making her unaffected. Uh, also, the kind of drawback effect of sending her to the graveyard during the next standby phase isn't even that much of a drawback if you end up activating this during your turn because if you activate it during your turn then she'll go to the graveyard during the standby phase of your opponent's turn which will proc or should proc her effect as far as i know uh to summon her back right because she just says during your opponent's turn this card is sent for the owner's hand or field to the graveyard so yeah uh, that will end up proccing that effect, uh, but again, that's only if you activate this on your turn, because it's during the standby phase of the next turn. So, if you activate this during your opponent's turn, she gets sent during your standby phase, and that effect does not activate. 
Um, also, the second effect is very relevant for disruption. Uh, not only just a battle effect by dropping your opponent's attack points by 2500, that's how strong the Abelstar is, but uh, can also very easily be a board wipe by destroying, it ends up destroying any monster that has 2500 or less attack. Uh, that can definitely be useful for disrupting your opponent's combo line, like while they have all their low attack power and material monsters on the field, as they try to link Synchro, Xyz, Fusion, whatever summon, you can flip this up and destroy those monsters and kind of wreck their plans. Alright, we also have Sinful Spoils of Subversion Snake Eye. This is a normal spell card that says target one face-up monster on the field, place it face-up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. You can only activate one Sinful Spoils of Subversion Snake Eye per turn. So this actually doesn't have anything to do with the Abel Star, but uh, it does have Sinful Spoils in the name, meaning that you are able to search it. It's also the first normal spell card uh, that we can search off the Abel Star, which does end up meaning that this can be activated the same turn that you said it. It's also a very unique card in that removing a monster from the field by placing it in its owner's spell and trap zone is not something we've seen on this generic of a card before, right? We've seen that kind of removal from some archetypal stuff like Veiled stuff, but to have a spell card that just straight up does that is a really interesting way to kind of take on removal in the modern day because, you know, a spell card that just straight up destroys a monster is not that great um, because sending monsters to the graveyard, especially destroying them, can often be upsides. That can even be true for banishing a lot of the time. Hell, nowadays, uh, even shuffling a monster back into the deck means it can be searched up or summoned from deck yet again, which means you haven't necessarily seen the last of it. However, there's very, 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 very few decks outside of extremely specific archetypes like Valiance or Crystal Beast or some others that actually can do anything with a monster that is in their spell and trap zone. And actually, fun fact, a lot of the time uh, against Pendulum decks, if you place this in their Pendulum zone, uh, one of their monsters, uh, as long as it's not a Pendulum monster with a scale of its own, then that is going to be uh, a lockdown for them. They're not going to be able to set up their Pendulum scales if you place like a regular effect monster or a link monster or a synchro. Or just, again, if you place a non-Pendulum monster in their zone, they can't pen to summon. So uh, this could be very, very hate, uh, uh, very, very uh, specific hate tech for that kind of deck as well. I don't think this card is going to actually end up being worth mating as part of the Sinful Spoils package. Um, but it's very, very interesting, nevertheless. Okay, uh, this is gonna be the big one here. So, we've looked at some spell cards that you can get off the Abel Star that have some pretty good general utility effects. This one is gonna be a little bit specific. However, like I said, this is gonna be, uh, the big support card here. Uh, the big Sinful Spoils is gonna enable a lot of stuff that we'll talk about a little bit later. Original Sinful Spoils, Snake Eye. Get another Snake Eye card, too. It's a normal spell card, so again, you can flip this up the turn you set it with the Abel Star. Send one other face-up card you control to the graveyard. Special summon one level one fire monster from your hand or deck. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one Snake Eye or the Abel Star monster in your graveyard, Add one level 1 fire monster from your deck to your hand, then place the targeted monster on the bottom of the deck. You can only use one original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye per turn, and only once that turn. Whew, so, uh, this is definitely branching a little bit out from what the other Diabellstar cards did, or the other Sinful Spoil cards, rather. Again, those are more general utility cards. This one is looking to do something pretty specific. Uh, special summoning level 1 fire monsters, and also adding them, too. Uh, the cost of sending a face-up card you control to the graveyard is very negligible, given that you can just send the Diabell Star herself, and also given that on your follow-up turn, you can banish this from the graveyard, put back that Diabell Star you sent, and then get another search for a level 1 fire monster from your deck to your hand. 
So a good amount of the level one fire monsters that we're, we'll be grabbing with this are actually stuff we're gonna talk about here shortly uh, that are within the Snake Eye archetype. However, I still wanted to pop over to Master Duel Meta, now we can alt tab, and let's go ahead and search up some of the current level one fire monsters in the game and just see what kind of utility we can possibly get off of this, right? So there's going to be one very obvious answer we'll talk about here as soon as we do some searching, but uh, Fengli and, Sol and the Soldier Palm and Jet Synchron are worth noting. Uh, these are both already useful in Tier Limit and already used sometimes in Tier Limit. So the Diabellstar engine becomes a pretty natural fit, given that it's already generically pretty good, and again, uh, you can search up these level 1 tuners. Also, being able to search these, again, pretty good level 1 tuners um, off of a generic engine makes pile decks looking pretty interesting with stuff like Jet Synchron and Diabell Star. But that is not the big one. Uh, one of the big ones, actually, there are a couple of big ones. One of the big ones, one of the biggest ones, is going to be Rescue Ace Hydrant. So, one of the main things that was limiting Rescue Ace, besides the fact that they actually don't have all of their support yet, is that Hydrant is not the most searchable card in the world, but the deck wants to get to Hydrant literally every turn of every game possible. Now, the Hydrant was kind of searchable off of like 1 for 1 and Piri Reese map uh, on current Rescue Ace builds. However, it's pretty easy to see that the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye is definitely going to be the way to go, right? Because again, this DML Star engine already provides so many useful tools. Um, so to be able to also on top of that, just pull out, you know, the, your deck's main card if you're on Rescue Ace is definitely very, 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 very good. Um, looking at other, whoops, sorry about that, looking at other level 1 monsters here, uh, fire monsters in particular, there's some Jirak stuff, which is kind of cute, um, one of the other main things that I'm really looking at here, actually there is Fire Flint Lady, which is already used in fire piles, but mainly I'm looking at Infernoble Knight Renad, 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 Renad? I'm not sure. But in any case, uh, this card is already pretty good in Warrior Piles and, of course, in, in for Noble Knight, which in for Noble Knight is an archetype that's actually going to get support in the same pack that Dia Bellstar is coming out. So if we are indeed getting, like, you know, all of the Infernoble Noble Knight support, all of the next wave, uh, Infernoble Noble Knight is going to be a very, very solid deck. And um, again, being able to special this off of your Diabell Star engine makes the Diabell Star engine looking pretty appealing for that archetype. I think that's actually a lot of the reason why we got the uh, Sinful Spoils and Diabell Star engine uh, a little bit earlier than a lot of people were anticipating is because we're getting Infernobles in and this will definitely help them as well as also supporting the Rescue Ace archetype. Again, Rescue Ace does also have more support that it needs to get, but... Uh, this will definitely help them out, too. Very, very much so. So, uh, There are also a couple of other level 1 fire monsters that we're going to be looking at here that are useful for this. And thinking about the Fire King archetype, which should still be uh, at least somewhat of a ways off from Master Duel. But one of that deck's main cards, and that Fire King deck is very, very good, by the way. Uh, arguably looking like it might even be tier 0. But... Um, one of that deck's main cards is also a level 1 fire monster, making this card very, very relevant for metas to come. Oops, uh, I went to control tab. Here we go. So now we're going to start looking at some snake eye cards, and these are also going to be level 1 fire monsters, so definitely keep that in mind when thinking about using these cards with the Sinful Spoils engine, right? So we'll start with Snake Eyes. Ash is a level 1 fire pyro monster with 800 attack, 1000 defense. If this card is normal or a special summon, you can add one level 1 fire monster from your deck to your hand. You can send two face-up cards to control to the graveyard, including this card. Special summon one Snake Eye monster from your hand or deck, except Snake Eye Ash. You can only use each effect of Snake Eye Ash once per turn. So, this is a pretty clear starter for the archetype, right? Uh, it's a searcher, and you can also... Um, even search stuff from the deck. You can do both effects, too, which is kind of wild. 
And note that it says face up cards. So it's pretty easy to proc this effect. You don't even have to summon out another monster. You could send a face up spell or trap card to the graveyard as well. Okay, next Snake Eye card we're going to look at is Snake Eye Oak, also a level 1 Fire Pyro Monster. This one has a 900 attack and 200 defense. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one of your level 1 Fire Monsters that is banished or in your graveyard. Either add it to your hand or you can special summon it. You can send two face of cards to control the graveyard, including this card. Special a Snake Eye Monster from hand or deck, except Oak. You can only use each effect of Oak once per turn. Let me take a sip of water here real quick. Ah, there we go. So it's uh, pretty clear that the main running theme of this archetype is sending a couple of your stuff and pulling out any Snake Eye Monster from deck. This one is kind of like the Recycler, um, being able to summon stuff out of the graveyard or banish, whereas the Ash was the, like, starter slash searcher or whatever, right? So, and there is also going to be Snake Eye Birch, level 1 Fire Pyro, 0 attack, 2100 defense. If you control a Fire Monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only special summon Snake Eye Birch once per turn this way. During your opponent's turn, you can send a two face of cards to control to the graveyard, including this card. Special a Snake Eye monster from your hand or deck, except Snake Eye Birch. You can only use each effect of Snake Eye Birch once per turn. So, this is of course the natural extender. It does also offer the uh, effect to summon a Snake Eye monster from the deck, but this one actually offers it as a quick effect. So, you have the option to do that, again, as a quick effect, if you so desire. Now, here is going to be the boss monster, in which you're probably going to be summoning a lot of the time uh, off of the various Snake Eyes level 1 monsters effects. Snake Eyes Flamberge Dragon is a level 8 fire dragon with 3000 attack, 2500 defense. It states you can target one face up monster on the field or in either graveyard, place it face up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. During your opponent's turn, quick effect. You can target one monster card, treat it as a continuous spell on the field, special summon it to your field. If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can special summon two level one fire monsters from your graveyard. You can only use each effect of Snake Eyes Flamberg Dragon once per turn. So when you see the level ones and then you see this guy, the play pattern of the deck seems pretty clear, right? Um, a lot of the time, you know, for example, especially on like turn two, right? You can normal summon Snake Eye Ash, use the effect to then add the uh, Snake Eye Birch. Snake Eye Birch can special itself from the hand. You then use either of their effects to summon the Flamberge Dragon from deck. Flamberge Dragon places one of your opponent's monsters in the spell trap zone, removing it from the field. Then during your opponent's turn, you can bring that monster out to your field. Um, also, you know, when this card ends up getting sent to the graveyard, you can bring back the level 1 monsters that you used in order to summon it. So, yeah, seems like a pretty obvious play pattern and a pretty neat one. Uh, again, using, putting opponent's monsters in the spell trap zone as removal is something we don't see a whole lot of. And this card is actually pretty accessible even outside of its own archetype. It's like relatively generic, doesn't have any huge hoops you have to jump through necessarily in order to get it in play. So that's cool stuff. All right, let's see what else we've got here. Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. So we're going into some of the Snake Eye support that does not have Sinful Spoils in the name. Again, there have actually been a couple of Snake Eye uh, spell support cards we've seen up to this point. The Subversion, which again, this actually isn't Snake Eye support, but it's also pretty obvious this does what Snake Eye wants to do, uh, particularly what the Flamberg Dragon wants to do. And then, of course, this uh, this Sinful Spoiled card also has Snake Eye in the name and summons out level 1 Fire Monsters. So, again, yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, we have some of the archetype kind of bleeding into the other archetype here. Um, but now we're going to look at specifically Snake Eye only cards, right? So the Field Spell, Divine Temple of the Snake Eye. When this card is activated, you can place one Snake Eye monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard face up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. Level 1 Fire Monsters you control gain 1100 attack points. Once per turn, if your opponent normal or special summons a monster except during the damage step, 
You can target one monster card on the field treated as a continuous spell. Special summon it to your field. You can only activate one Divine Temple of the Snake Eye per turn. So, again, it's pretty clear to see how this goes into the play pattern. Uh, it allows you to kind of use placing Snake Eye monsters in your spell trap zone, not as removal, but more as, like, kind of delayed card advantage, which is kind of neat. Uh, also, boosting up your level 1 fire monsters to give them, uh, you know, kind of a fighting chance during your opponent's turn. Or if you just want to battle with them on your turn as well. So, it's a neat support card. Okay, so now we're going to look at a couple of cards that were not a part of Wave 1 support. But I think these two cards might end up making the cut. There's more additional support, by the way, beyond these couple of cards we're going to look at here. But... I'm mainly talking about these two because, again, I think there's a decent shot these cards could be in with this wave of support. The rest of it, I would be surprised if it all came out this early. But Snake Eyes Poplar is a level 1 fire pyro monster with 700 attack and 200 defense. If this card is added to your hand, except by drawing it, you can special summon this card. If this card is normal or a special summoned, you can add one Snake Eyes spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one fire monster in your graveyard, place it face up in its owner's spell and trap zone as a continuous spell. You can only use each effect of Snake Eyes Poplar once per turn. So, this is a very, very important card to talk about because it does a lot more than it might seem like it does on paper. On paper, it's pretty easy to see how this supports the Snake Eye archetype, right? Um, when it's summoned, you can add Snake Eye Spell Trap cards, and it also supports, uh, you know, fire monsters by putting them in the Spell and Trap Zone. But, this card actually has a lot of relevance for its Pyro typing as well. Now, I don't believe it's going to come out in this upcoming set. It's probably going to be a little bit. I would be very, very surprised if we got it in the Selection Pack, but... There is a very, 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 very popular spell card called Bonfire that recently came out. It's also a stupidly expensive one, but that's a whole other topic. Anyway, Bonfire is a very, very simple search spell. It just says, add a level 4 lower pyro monster from your deck to your hand. And you can only use one per turn. That's literally all it says. This is going to hugely boost not only the Snake Eyes archetype, but literally any deck that uses the... Sinful Spoils package, particularly any that wants to summon level 1 fire monsters. Because basically, if you open Bonfire, like in Rescue Ace, for example, that can be a starter to like, your full combo line. Because here's what you do. You Bonfire to add Snake Eyes Poplar from deck to hand. This card is added to your hand, except by drawing it, maybe you can then special it. After specialing Snake Eyes Poplar, that'll proc the effect to add a Snake Eyes Spoiler Trap card. You can get Original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. You can then activate this to send an other face-up card you control to the graveyard, like, say, I don't know, that Poplar you just summoned, to then special a level 1 Fire Monster from your deck. And if that's Rescue Ace, you summon out the Hydrant. If that's Fire King, you summon out the little level 1 Fire King monster. If it's Infernoble, you summon out the level 1 Infernoble monster. So... Bonfire Search Poplar actually ends up becoming a starter for a lot of decks that aren't even Snake Eyes for that reason. So, uh, that's one of the reasons why Bonfire is so good. It's like one of the main reasons why Bonfire is so good. Uh, of course, generic Search spell cards are pretty much always good no matter what. But um, So yeah, I'll be eager to see if we get this card. Even if we end up getting this one, I would be super shocked if we also got Bonfire. But, whenever we get this plus Bonfire, that is further uh, consistency boost for, again, Rescue Ace, Infernoble, Fire King, just the Diabelle Star engine, uh, or rather the Sinful Spoils engine as a whole, right? Or any deck, at least, that wants to summon level 1 fires with that engine. So, another spell card that I think has a shot of maybe coming with the other stuff is Dramatic Snake Eye Chase. It's a quick play spell card that says place a Dia Bell Star monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard face up in its owner's spell trap zone as a continuous spell. During the end phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one monster card treated as a continuous spell you control. Special summon it, you will use each dramatic snake eye chase once per turn. So, this is a spell card that, like, more 
clearly, I guess, links the archetypes together. The Sinful Spoils slash Gia Bellstar plus Snake Eye. I don't think this card is that great. I, I think maybe in a dedicated Snake Eye deck you might play it, but I don't know how good a dedicated Snake Eye deck is. I think a lot of the power of these cards are to summon other archetypes, level 1 fire monsters, and kind of aid them in that. Okay, so that actually does it for all of the cards that we're going to talk about. Again, there are other Sinful Spoils and Snake Eye and Diabelle Star cards that are out there. But I, again, I would be extremely surprised if any of those actually end up making it into Master Duel with the first wave here. So I did also want to talk... I keep doing that, I'm sorry. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the deck lists that um, the deck showed up in, right? Diabelle Star. Um, particularly when it first released in the OCG. Now, granted, the release order from the OCG at this time and to Master Duel right now is very different. So, don't copy any of these decks over, like, one-to-one. -one, but we can see that, like, Rescue Ace kind of shot up in popularity when the Diabell Star engine came out. Granted, granted, they did also have their follow-up support of Emergency uh, Plus... What is the other one called? I'm thinking, I, I can't remember the name right now. Not Airlifter, that one's already out. Why can't I remember the card's name? Look, suffice it to say, the other Rescue Ace support is not out yet. So, I don't think Rescue Ace is going to shoot up to Tier 1 uh, upon the Diabell Star and uh, Snake Eye pack, uh, cards coming out. However, I do think it will still be a much-needed consistency boost for Rescue Ace. I think Rescue Ace will see tier i think it'll be like a tier two or three deck if i had to guess um once it gets the rest of its support i do think rescue ace definitely becomes a tier one deck but with only the diabelle star stuff and not the follow-up rescue ace support i think it'll probably end up being like i said tier three or two there's also uh tier limits tier limits can also make use of the diabelle star package uh, as I touched upon earlier, um, with the Jet Synchron and the Fengli, the Soldier Palm. Now, to be granted, at this point in the time of the OCG, uh, they were using that for a Chaos Ruler a lot of the time, which, unfortunately, oh, we do not have. However, um, there is definitely still some merit to it. Like it says here, the Sinful Spoils package is for special in Jet Synchron, providing an alternate play if Revolution Synchron is on the opening hand. Uh, Diabelle Star is special summoned by Water Enchantress. Oh, and this build also uses the uh, Adventure Engine, as well as Revolution Synchron. Revolution Synchron also, I believe, should be coming out in this pack. But, um... So yeah, you can use the Diabelle Star to set up the Water Enchantress in the Graveyard Grant. They have three copies, and that's a lot more consistent. But you can also use Revolution Synchron with the Adventure Engine to make Naturia Beast. Revolution Synchron and the Adventure Token are used to Synchro Nitria Beast. So, that is also something that you can kind of do. But, again, it's, if nothing else, a neat idea to explore. And even if Diabelle Star grabbing, like, Jet Synchron does end up being used in Tier Limit specifically, I do still think that that has some interesting, like, general kind of, like, pile deck applications. But, that's going to go ahead and do it for this bit of a primer video. Uh, again, I mostly just wanted to make sure that you were familiar with Diabell Star and the Sinful Spoil and Snake Eye cards uh, so that we were all on the same page as these are coming out in Master Duel. That can be one of the, the kind of hard things if you're like me and you only play Master Duel and you don't play the TCG or OCG, right? It's like, ah, uh, all these new cards are coming in. It feels like everybody else already knows what they do and I feel behind, but... Again, the goal of this video is to hopefully not to help you hopefully not feel like you're so far behind. Because now we know what the cards all do, why they're good, and what they're going to be used in. So that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Let's move now to the outro. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel, so thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon, uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon, so uh, you do get something for supporting 
starting there. And if you're interested, I also have a coaching tier option uh, as well. Details again will be on Patreon in the link below. Uh, also in the description linked below is my Twitch page where I stream uh, a few times a week. You can go ahead and check that out, follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live. Uh, you'll also find my second YouTube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the Twitch VODs as well as some additional uh, non-Yu-Gi-Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.